Hello and welcome to another amazing episode of It's the Bottom Line That Matters podcast where we are devoted to your success. On today's program, we have a really exciting guest. Our good friend Jill Lublin is here to join us and work with us to help us really figure out exactly where we are going in terms of publicity. So let me just give you a little bit of background, though, about Jill that you know why Jill is such an amazing uh, guest and person that you really should be sitting there with a pen and paper or your computer ready to take notes, copious notes, as we are moving forward. But remember, it's not just about taking notes. It's about implementing and not just taking the notes. So Jill Lublin is an international speaker on the topics of radical influence, publicity, networking, kindness, and referrals. She's the author of four best-selling books, including Get Noticed, Get Referrals, and co-author of Guerrilla Publicity and Networking Magic. Her latest book, Profit of Kindness, went number one in four categories. Jill is a master strategist on how to position your business for more profitability and more visibility in the marketplace. She is CEO of a strategic consulting firm and has over 25 years of experience working with more than 100,000 people plus national and international media. She teaches a virtual, virtual publicity crash course and consults and speaks all over the world. She's helped authors to create book deals with major publishers and agents and even helping to get foreign rights deals. Jill, thank you very much for coming on the program today. That was a mouthful. So let me ask you, um, your bio is extremely impressive, but let me ask you, there's so much that you've done, and what has been your favorite part in terms of what it is that you do on a regular basis? Because working with hundreds of thousands of people, I mean, you're talking to so many people, there's got to be something that drives you and something that you love doing. Thank you. Well, I love getting up every day and supporting, I like to say, messengers getting their message out, right? And that could be a product, a service, uh, you know, coaches, consultants, speakers, all kinds of people in all kinds of industries. I love the challenge of that, the excitement about um, different people and what they bring to the table. So for me, it's, it's really the excitement of supporting others to, I see it as a contribution, right? What you do, everyone who's listening here, it's a contribution. We all contribute in our ways. So for me, it's, it's exciting to find that message and and get people supported to actually get media and make it happen. Like, wow, you know, that it is accessible. And that's incredible. I mean, when you think about uh, the media, right? I mean, all of us are so drawn to various forms of media. And we've spoken about uh, public relations and media in the past. But before we kind of jump into talking directly to media and the benefits, things along those lines, we had another guest talk about crisis communications and how that's a part of public relations. But can you give us more of an idea as far as public relations or PR, what it is and what it's not? Because so many people think, well, I'm talking to the media, I'm doing public relations. It's not necessarily, but it may be a piece of it. So as the expert here, as we're talking about it, I'd love to get more of an idea. How do you define it? And what is it that we as small business owners can really be paying attention to and how can we try and move forward? I know that's multiple questions, but. Okay, I'm tracking with you, I'm tracking with you. So a couple things. One is it's all public relations. It's all public relations. Being here in Zoom, uh, when you're networking, your name on your Zoom room, it's public relations, you know, like, like a guy's um, all of a sudden I found out he's really called David, but on his zoom, it's called it's Dave. It's like, well, what are you, Dave or David, Joe or Joseph? You see what I'm saying? Chris or Christine. Um, so I think all of what, what I think is really important is to stay consistent and persistent. That's public relations. So what is it? It's creating a great message. It's creating visibility campaign that keeps you consistently visible out in the community. That's PR. It's about getting podcasts like this wonderful one and, and media generally, your local, your local press, your local radio, TV. It's all important, right? I, I actually value 
every single thing that people do to get out there in public relations. I call them visibility building activities. And that's all PR. Um, what PR isn't is working on your brochure to have it the best thing ever. You know, it's like PR is about how do you create, in, uh, let me just say, consistent visibility and, and take a look at that. And by the way, I'm thinking, you know, one hour a week is great to spend on that. So don't go into, oh, my God, how do I fit this in? One hour a week, spend time on how do you increase your visibility? And with that will come disability building activities, right? So let's not make this too complicated. I'm known for uncomplicating PR. Um, and I think it's important that you look at what are simple, easy ways. And by the way, in guerrilla publicity, everything we talk about is free, um, that you can create that ongoing recognition factor. And that's really important when you think about how do you get out there, right? I mean, Joel just mentioned a couple of ways to be out there and all the branding uh, tools. I don't know if you caught that, if you were listening really carefully, even naming the Zoom room, right? I mean, that's a whole other way of branding because so many people just take the default information that Zoom gives if you're using Zoom or using Teams or whatever it is that you're using, it's all about the branding, right? I mean, one thing, and Jill, I know you didn't even mention this, but it's about the email address too, right? If you're using uh, joeschmo at gmail.com and nothing against Joe Schmo and Google, but guess what? If you're Joe Schmo, you really are giving Google all of the expertise. Why isn't it joeschmo at joeschmo.com or joeschmo at brand.com? instead of Gmail, right? If you're a business, you need to be branding everything back to you. So that way, when you do go out there into the community, when you are out there talking with the media, everything is going to be there. But Joe, let me ask you, as you're talking to media, right? I mean, the media is overloaded with pitches, right? If we're trying to get out there, what is one way to get their attention and one way to completely lose their um, interest entirely. Beautiful. Jennifer, before I answer that question, I have to point out one other thing that you so wonderfully pointed out about the Zoom branding. Look at in back of Jennifer. She's got the name of her show, right? Yes, that's fabulous. Look at in back of me. I got every single book. Whether you have a show or a book, you know, I have a Facebook uh, ads lead generation client and we have that on the back of her done by Canva. I mean, please always be remembering that people are seeing what you do. Let's reinforce it. Okay, so I just needed to say that. And Jennifer, as far, <laughs> you bet. As far as one thing that um, really works with media, I, I want you to go check out and actually register for Google Alerts. And in there, I want you to put your name so that if anyone does talk about you, you're gonna know. And also, by the way, if somebody else has named you, it's important to know. Um, so I think that's a good thing, right? So that you can understand how, how you show up. Um, number two, whatever you're up to in your business, like let's say you're a business consultant, well, put in the word business and then everything around business is gonna show up, anything that the media is writing. So I think Google Alerts is a fabulous tool for letting you know what the media is talking about. Like for instance, when the Prophet of Kindness came out, I put in the word kindness into Google Alerts. I put in, of course, my name and guess what? Up popped a woman who was writing a big article to celebrate World Kindness Day, which turns out to be November 13th. I didn't actually know that, believe it or not, when I wrote the book. So Google Alerts alerted me to the fact that there's a big holiday that celebrates kindness, number one. Number two, they alerted me to the fact that I could start my campaign and that a woman wrote a huge article in Parade Magazine as an example. Does that make sense? So I think that's a really good first thing to do, totally simple and easy. Um, and then what not to do, you know, don't do what I like to call beat the chest publicity. What does that mean? I do this, I do that, I do this. Media doesn't care, honestly, what you do per se. What they care about is their readers, their viewers, and their listeners. And so you better be talking to them 
okay? And what that looks like is solving problems in the marketplace. What that looks like is um, tying in your story to what's going on out in the world. Like for instance, here's a great example. One of my clients is a psychologist. Um, she basically works for schools and helps relationships. However, when Simone Biles said no to the Olympics and all the mental health topics came up, I said to her, we're switching your topic. We're going to talk mental health, right? We're going to talk, we're going to tie it in to Simone Biles as an example. So what I want you to do is pay attention to what's going out in the world. And by the way, this is as easy as looking at your phone and seeing what's the top stories of the day, right? And then the question is, how can I fit in? That's what you're going to ask yourself as you're listening today. How can I fit in to some of the top topics in the world? And if you don't quite have an answer, that's, that's fine. You're going to start planting seeds because you, my friends, are a publicity garden. And so we plant seeds for now, and then we plant them for three, six, nine months ahead, right? And so keep looking ahead. Like, how can I fit into November or December for end of the year stories or thankful stories or gratitude stories? You know, if you're a mindset coach, you want to set your mind straight for the end of the year into the beginning of the next one. You see where I'm going with this? So take a look at how you can fit in what's going on now and then looking ahead. Absolutely. And what you were just mentioning, and we discussed it in the past in terms of newsjacking, that's exactly what it is when you look at current events and you play directly on those uh, stories. And by the way, just one thing for those of you that um, heard the Google alerts, that's a completely free service that Google offers. So if you don't already have it set up, just go to Google, type in Google alerts and it'll walk you through how to set up all of the various alerts that you are looking for. There's other services like Mention and services like that that do have more opportunities, but there are uh, paid plans there. But Google Alerts is definitely a free service that you do want to look at. Another one, and I'm just going to throw this out there, Jill, is getting editorial calendars from different publications. Right? If you know that the various publications and take your market, right? If you work with seniors and you want to go after the AARP magazine, look at what their editorial calendar is going to look like because they're going to tell you when they're going to be pushing the insurance shopping program, right? I mean, Medicare open enrollment comes every year at the same time. And so they're going to be running their Medicare open enrollment programs in October, so that way, October, November, and the beginning of December, their members know exactly what it is. So if you're in that field, that is an area you want to be focused on and know when you have to start pitching them if you want your information in there as well. But you can also see what they're talking about and when it's going to be coming out. So that way, even if your article did not get in, you can still coincide with the information that is there which is a really major big ninja hack that you all can be taking advantage of right away in your publicity so that you can, like Joe was saying, plant those seeds and grow into that publicity garden. So, Joe, let me ask you, though, as we look at um, getting a media script, right, what is a great way for us to have that script? Now, obviously, there's different ways of talking to them and we said like they don't care this is what you do or whatever but how do you create that great media script to get that great publicity so remember that you're an expert right and experts solve problems the question is what's the problem you solve and that's the one to answer that's part of the script so that's why i'm saying you want to take what you do and recreate it sometimes and don't get too attached to well this is exactly what i do because the question is what will the media respond to the media will respond to what's the problem out there what is it that you do um, that helps others? And that's, that's what they really care about. That's the piece that is important to keep in mind. And, and so the best script is the problem today is, and then give them three solutions, make them really simple, speak in you language. And then here's a fun hack, use 
the name of your program or your product or your service somewhere inside of your message. It can be one word. Like I was uh, working with a consultant, he has beyond consulting, right? And so we gave some tips for going beyond your business. We didn't even use his whole business name. Use, if you can, at least one word somewhere that will clue people in to what you're talking about and start planting your seeds for what your business is. And that is really an incredible uh, hack just in terms of thinking what you're uh, looking at. So let me ask you, though, as we look at the return on investment with publicity, right, some people have hired PR firms that they know exactly, well, I've got a publicist who's constantly pitching me and getting me and everything. Some people have to do it on their own because they're operating on a shoestring budget. And other people occasionally are hiring people to do it, doing outreach, different things along those lines. But how do you begin to measure the ROI? And what would be a good way to say my return is actually making sense on the value that I'm investing in the publicity? So here's the thing, if you don't invest anything in publicity, nothing happens. I mean, that's the truth, right? Or as my friend P.T. Barnum said, a terrible thing happens without publicity, nothing. <laughs> so the point, what we're looking at on ROI, you know, if it's the thing about creating more prospects and leads, right? It's also about creating recognition, familiarity, and trust in the marketplace. Now, some things you can measure like prospects and leads. I mean, listen, one strategy uh, on writing an announcement every 60 days that I teach people in my virtual publicity course, granted one of my clients, just this is even one story I'll tell you, she got nine prospects. She was switching careers, really, literally a dentist to something else, right? She was a former dentist. And I gave her one specific strategy for sending out an announcement. Here's what happened. Nine clients, excuse me, nine prospects, six of whom became clients. I'd say that's great ROI. Another woman um, following my specific direction, hey, guess what happened with her? She got in her local uh, women's magazine in, where, in the community where she lived in North Carolina. Do you know literally um, eight clients? Right away, 12, like 12 came in quickly, eight closed. And by the way, she's still talking to the other four thousands and thousands of dollars, $36,000 worth of consulting. Now, let me just tell you, her smile was real big. Um, and I hear these stories a lot. One of my clients, a self-published author, sold uh, 45 books in a 10-minute podcast interview. So what I see consistently is increased sales. I see consistently um, the what would I call it? The, uh, I'm not as technical, but I know that when people visit your website, right, the website visits, the stats on that go up usually between 30 to 45%, literally on the day of an interview that it comes out. Okay, number uh, three or four is the power of um, that trust factor. You see, when people keep seeing your name, the credibility rises and what happens is, I call it the I've heard of her somewhere syndrome. I've, I've seen his name somewhere. Sometimes they won't remember, but like if they Google you, they're gonna see this podcast. They're gonna see different things you've been on. And all of a sudden your um, trust factor goes way up because your expertise is established. That right there is gonna put you way ahead of the competition. That right there is gonna have people call you first. That's ROI, right? Um, and you know, one of my clients, in fact, is an instructional designer. Now I have to tell you by recreating his story, what we did was we got him into the front page of the San Francisco Business Journal, got him into Entrepreneur Magazine, got him into Mac Home Journal. I mean, imagine this literally for him, nine months worth of publicity, no kidding, place after place, podcast after podcast, magazines um, and radio, not as much TV just because of his topic. And here's what's interesting. His business profit went up by 45%. And I'll tell you, one of my strategies is called use everything you've got. So he is Asian American. And what happened was we translated his article into Chinese, okay? Put it into the Chinese times. 
Do you know that one article, this is ROI, got him $7,000 worth of consulting business. I mean, hello, <laughs> this is good, right? That's ROI and story after story, I could tell you, Jennifer, but these are some of them um, that indicate a consistent pattern of increased web visit. And that's important because people will then stay and buy from you. They'll book time with you, um, increased prospects, increased revenues. And you know what else? It, it actually saves you money. I want to say that too. That's also have, how come you have high ROI because you're saving money on other things that can be expensive, certain ads, uh, certain direct mail campaigns, whatever it is, all of which, by the way, I believe in in a mixed um, in a mixed way, but what I've seen consistently is the free publicity is driving people to you. That's what I want for all of you. And again, definitely look at guerrilla publicity because it's all in there in Jill's book. But Jill, let me ask you as it relates to because you mentioned announcements earlier. Are you talking about sending press releases or media alerts? Or are you talking about other kinds of getting the word out as it relates to what you mentioned with announcements and moving forward to get that publicity? An announcements is one of my uh, hacks, and it is not a press release. It's actually a localized strategy that most people can use. And what you're doing is you're sending basically an announcement celebrating something. It could be a new hire, it could be an award you won, it could be um, a, new, uh, a new program you're launching, and it, it's actually more localized into your community, also where you graduated university, as well as maybe the Facebook groups you're a member of and other places that you're uh, affiliated with. So it's a super cool, easy strategy, completely free, that actually creates prospects and clients not to mention familiarity and trust. And, and don't under, you know, don't, let me just say to all of you, don't undervalue that familiarity and trust factor because that's the very thing that can put you ahead of someone else that they were considering. And that's definitely really important in terms of making sure that you're constantly out there. Like uh, Joe was saying, you want to always be seen. Right. The more that somebody sees you, there was once a story and you mentioned it um, a moment ago, but there was a story, though, where uh, somebody was walking down the street and somebody comes up to them and says, hey, I saw you on TV. And immediately right there. And by the way, it was just because that person was involved in some sort of a story, but it wasn't about them individually. But because they were seen on TV, that celebrity factor all of a sudden starts to kick in and people want to work with you because, hey, I saw you on such and such place. So it doesn't matter even if you're doing YouTube videos, right? If you're out there and you're doing YouTube videos and you can be the person that's driving people to go see you, hey, I saw you on the screen. It doesn't matter big screen, little screen, movie theater, it really I saw you, and this is really going to help you because of that no like and trust of the familiar, familiarity um, that Joe was mentioning is really important as you're looking at what you're doing. But, Joe, you know, let me ask you, there's so many amazing programs out there, and you've got an incredible offer for our very loyal listeners uh, today in terms of helping them grow their business. Can you give us a little bit more of an idea of what it is and how do they find you? Sure, thank you. Well, listen, I, I definitely teach a virtual publicity crash course, super simple and get it done. And you can check that out um, on publicitycrashcourse.com. And let me also say that I've created a free, wonderful gift for you, which is the opportunity to get more publicity tips and keep them super simple. So check out publicitycrashcourse.com slash free gift. And I'm sure it'll be in the notes also. On that, um, you will get to check out all the um, more and more great 
public relations tips that'll help you to escalate and elevate your business and the credibility and your prospects and your revenue. And then also I'm inviting you to a free masterclass right on that gift. So go check it out, publicitycrashcourse.com slash free gift. Thank you so much for all of that amazing information. I know Patricia, Daniel, and I are always talking about ways to increase visibility, ways to increase our success rates. And publicity is definitely one of those pieces that you want to be taking advantage of. There's so many low-cost or free uh, publicity matters, and Jill mentioned quite a few of them in the program. Definitely go back, listen to this episode again after you listen to it the first time because you're going to hear new nuances in terms of some of the ways that we spoke about different programs and different ways. And as you're thinking strategically, how can I incorporate these different programs? Think about what you're going to do today, tomorrow, next week, next month, over the next six months and the next year, because it's going to ultimately elevate your business and help you really dramatically increase your visibility and more profit. And that's exactly where we are. And here's to your success.